Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Christina speaking today. It's uh, November 16, 2022. I hope you are doing well. And so I have a message from the Lord. But before I share it, I want to confess that I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God who has come in the flesh on earth, died for our sins, and was buried in the Lord's of the third day. Hallelujah. Amen. Every knee will bow down and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is coming for the righteous. I am praying for all of us to be found worthy to be taken in the rapture. Please keep me in your prayer as well. We are waiting for the day of the Lord, which nobody knows except God. And so while we are waiting, we must keep doing what the Lord wants us to do until the end. I hope you are watching, praying, and ready every day because the time is almost over. And so before I give you the message of today, I want to talk about a few things, brothers and sisters, things that are going on these last days we are living in. The Lord is warning us about the timing we are living in. We are living, Matthew 24, verse 24, many are coming in the name of Jesus, claiming to hear from him and using the scriptures to deceive many. The Lord said that the devil is at work 24 hours to deceive many, even the elect, if it was possible. The Lord said that there are many false teachings going on, witchcraft, sorceries, and new age teachings. They are using the name of Jesus and the scriptures to deceive many. And so you must always pray and seek the Lord for discernment before you listen to anybody. Many are being attacked, including myself, these last days we are living in. Brothers and sisters, don't give up because we are almost at the end and the enemy knows that his timing is almost over. The true believers have the power to destroy the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And so the more you spend time in prayer and worship, reading the word of God and listening to his voice, the more you have the power to destroy these evil attacks. Remember the prayer and fasting are very powerful to destroy the enemy and so don't give up. Now I'm going to share with you the message of today which is all about the scriptures. The Lord is telling you through these scriptures, brothers and sisters, what nobody else will tell you, not even your pastors, because they don't care about your eternal life. All they care about is the money and so The Lord wants you to go through these scriptures. Lead all of them, pray and seek him for discernment and understanding. These scriptures the Lord is giving you will help you to see if you are going to heaven or to hell. The Lord is giving you the last chance to adjust your life before God, before it is too late. I know many are not interested in sitting down and listening to my messages because I talk about repentance. But, brothers and sisters, 
you can do whatever you want. You can decide to listen to these messages or to reject them. It is your choice. I am only here to give you the messages from the Lord, nothing else. But let me tell you something. Unless you repent all your sins, you are not going to see the face of the Lord God. The Lord is showing you through these scriptures how much he hates sin and the wicked. The wicked are going to be destroyed. And this is why you need to read all these scriptures. The Lord said that his people perish because of lack of knowledge. Many are living in sin because of lack of knowledge. The Lord asked me to remind you about Adam and Eve. You must understand that the devil knows the scriptures. He used the scripture to deceive Adam and Eve and so they disobeyed God and God punished them. And so Satan is using the scriptures these last days to deceive many. The Lord wants you to remember Sodom and Gomorrah. He wants you to remember Lot his wife. People of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed because of sin, sexual immorality. The Lord wants you to remember the days of Noah. Only Noah and his family, in total, eight people were saved. The Lord told me to tell you, brothers and sisters, that you are not exception. You must obey God and keep his commandments day and night. Many often in my messages, I say that God hates sin and he does not hate a sinner. What I mean about that is in reference to John 3 verse 16, God so loved the world and gave his only begotten son, Jesus, who died for our sins and so whoever believes in him shall not perish. You can read that scripture yourself. And so understand that we are all sinners and this is why we all must repent and so before it is too late. I have talked about being born again, which means you receive and accept Jesus Christ as your God and Savior. You believe in him and you repent all your sins. You get baptized of water and spirit. Once you did that, you receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who lives in you tells you everything, which means you cannot sin when you have the Holy Spirit in you. You can only sin by accident. And when you sin, the Holy Spirit tells you and you repent as quickly as possible. And so if you cannot obey God and keep his commandments day and night, you are not born again. The Lord wants you to read Psalm 1 and Psalm 15 in order to understand what you need to do 
to see the face of the Lord God. Also, Hebrews 12, verse 14 says that you must make peace with all people and live a holy life. If you do that, you will see the face of the Lord God, Jesus Christ, the King of the kings, our oh God and Savior. Now I'm going to read a few scriptures. And so please forgive me for any mistake I might make in reading these scriptures or in talking. As I said before, I speak French, but the Lord is giving me these scriptures in English. He's giving me these messages in English and he wants me to share his messages in English. And so I believe there is a reason why he's doing that. Now I'm going to read Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. There are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and they are few who find it. They are few who find it. Matthew 22, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Few are chosen, brothers and sisters. I'm going to read Psalm 7 from verse 11 to 13. God is a just judge and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he does not turn back, he will sharpen his sword, he bends his bow, and makes it ready. He also prepares for himself instruments of death. He makes his arrows into fiery shifts. You can lead this scripture yourself. I'm going to read Psalm 5 from verse 5 to 6. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. You hate all workers of iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak falsehood. The Lord abhors the brotosty and deceitful man. You can read this scripture itself as well. I'm going to talk about the other scriptures the Lord gave me. Matthew 25 from verse 21 to 46 because the Lord said that his judgment will also based on this scripture. It is very important for you to understand these words and see how they apply to your life before God, these last days we are living in. The Lord is coming to divide the sheep and the goats. The wicked will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Amen. John 12 verse 48. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Jeremiah 21 verse 14. But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings, says the Lord. I will kindle a fire on its forest, and it shall devour all things around it. 
This is Jeremiah 21, verse 14. Isaiah 48, verse 22. There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. John 3, verse 20. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds shall be exposed. I am going to um, give you another message from the Lord, especially for women. The Lord said, Woman, cover your head when you pray or prophesying. First Corinthians 11 from verse 2 to 10 and verse 13. Now I am going to share with you how the Lord delivered me from my sinful life. I have shared in my few videos how the Lord stopped me using makeup, using all these products on my hair and on my body, wearing fake hair, jewelries and garments. He stopped me dealing with vanity. And so I was live, living a sinful life, brothers and sisters. I was, I was dealing with many sins. The Lord delivered me from fornication. I used to have a boyfriend. I have committed some sexual immorality. I used to drink alcohol especially red wine. I used to gossip, especially at work, judging and condemning others, dealing with jealousy and envy, unforgiveness, lies, many, many sins, even though I was telling the Lord how much I love him with all my heart. I even used to go to the church every Sunday to show him how much I love him until he visited me and told me that the way I was living my life was not pleasing him. The things I was doing were the things his eyes hate. He told me that I was honoring him with my lips, but my heart was far from him. Matthew 15 from verse seven to nine. And so he asked me to pick up my cross and follow him. He did ask me to deny all these things and give him my life completely. I remember he gave me two options, to choose him or demons at that time. I believe I was on my way to hell when he said that I started crying. I was sick, scary, and I didn't know what to do. And so I asked him to help me because 
I, were, I was not capable to get out of my sinful life. And so when I said that, he asked me to allow him to help me, which I did. Brothers and sisters, from that time, my life changed. I have given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ today, and I am at peace. And so, if you are dealing with any sin and you don't know what to do, please don't give up. Turn to the Lord and allow him to help you because Jesus Christ is the only one who can help you with any situation, but you must allow him to do that. And so the Lord wants me to share with you all the scriptures he gave me about makeup, how we should dress, alcohol, these jewelry, garments, and everything. He told me that he wants me to stay natural, 100%. He wants you to stay who he created you to be. And so these scriptures will help you to see and to know how you should be living your life before God these last days. We are living it. I'm going to share with you the scriptures he gave me, brothers and sisters. He uh, gave me Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16 to 26, Deuteronomy 22, verse 5, Romans 6, 2 Kings 9, verse 30, Proverbs 31, verse 30, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, Jeremiah 4, verse 30, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, Proverbs 23, verse 29 to 35, Isaiah 5, verse 11, Proverbs 21, verse 6. You can read all these scriptures. Brothers and sisters, this is your responsibility to read all these scriptures because the time is ending and the judgment is coming. And so you need to be sure if you are going to heaven or to hell. This is what the Lord told me. Now, I, w I want to talk a little bit about something. Brothers and sisters, these last days we are living in, Satan is using the scriptures to deceive many, especially about the bride, the Rambi's wife. I know many are interested in watching the messages about the bride, the Rambi's wife, because men and women believe they are the bride of Christ. Brothers and sisters, the Lord gave me many scriptures, dreams and visions about his bride being one woman. If I get a chance, I will share with you the dreams, visions, and the scriptures the Lord gave me. But you can read Matthew 25 from verse 1 to 13. It talks about 10 virgins, and these 10 virgins, five are wise and five are crazy ones. They are all trying to get 
into the wedding, which means they are not the bride. And the Lord gave me one of the scriptures, Psalm 45, clearly shows that there is one bride, the wife of our Lord Jesus Christ. She has her companions. And it is very important to know that the bride, the Rambi's wife, is not God. There are many false teachings saying that the bride, the Rambi's wife, is God. No, because the scriptures show that the bride will worship her husband, Jesus. You can read Psalm 45 to understand about the bride and her husband. And so the Lord gave me a dream in which I heard him saying that the bride is hiding. If I get a chance, I will share with you that dream. And so I did ask him to give me the scriptures showing that the bride is hiding. And one of the scriptures he gave me is Esther chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. And also he told me that the bride is hiding because of her security. And also if people know who she is, they will worship her and she's not God, brothers and sisters. And so, in one of the dreams the Lord gave me, he showed me that there is a judgment coming upon those who claim to be the bride, his wife. Maybe next time, I will try to find time to share with you these dreams and visions and all scriptures the Lord gave me. Please be very, very careful. We are the body of Christ. We are the children of the bride, brothers and sisters. We are the children of the bridegroom and the bride, the Lord gave me a dream where he showed me the wedding dress of his bride. On her wedding dress, I saw many people on it. I did ask him why I saw many people on a wedding dress. And the Lord told me that is because we are her children. I will also share that dream with you next time. Please share this message with our brothers and sisters. The time is running out very quickly. God bless you.